life doesn't need to be a struggle. I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to Angry Hog René first. about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. René, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. No, you got this. There's the ball. You're the game. See? Your munching and complaining have ruined my concentration. Could the objective of the game be to throw the metal ball so it lands by the wooden ball? Ah, mon dieu. The pain in my back is unbearable. I can't even say if it's in my back or hip anymore. Feels like it's in both. I hope you pass out from it, you goddamn jellyfish. Men like you are the reason this nation is sinking. Trying to throw something as close to a predetermined point as possible. Measuring. This must be the age-old game of Patank. Shush. Ignore them. They don't know what they're doing. They're old. You are letting down yourself and the team. Get in the damn game already. Does it matter what team? Pick a team. Any team. The blue team. You're letting them down. Get in the game and throw the goddamn ball. Eyes on the ball, Dinky Winky. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter, you'll make it work. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind, everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. An embodiment of pure motion. A fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. Behold the fear and confusion reflecting in the eyes of the two feeble geezers. They are in awe of your superiority. You are a god to them. It wasn't mid. The shot was at least 23 meters, probably 24 and then some. Nothing to be embarrassed about. What the hell is your problem? I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. A man his age getting worked up like that? Better watch that blood pressure. 
to vandalize our game, son. We can't prep a tonk with five bull. Yes, Petonk! You ruined our Petonk game! We want our bull back! Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you oil slug. You are as a goddamn bull. Good. Mistakes are forgiven, when men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe you will try. Now why did you approach us? You never know. He might know something. This is a good vantage point. Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. In Martinez, the Union is the law. So can you really blame them? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I'm an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. This is a man with a lot of past, but little present, and almost no future. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly, too valiantly, so valiantly we got licked. Should've fought dirty, like they did with this suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't so, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. Because this place is a damn beachhead. Had to soften the commies up first. Yes, the military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, officer. I hate those foreign dogs, but... Uh, the enemy of my enemy and all that. They're the lesser evil. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players of the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one.
Preposterous! Surely you don't mean it. I'm just sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those commie hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking my piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal, or even if that damn clan Fuisel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. But this is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. Damn Frisell. He was a king we couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him, and the crown. He died in the hands of the Hyperlay, in a very public execution. He slouches as he says that. It makes him smaller, admitting they left the king to the mob. A true king in both blood and mind led Revachal before Frisell. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? They've forgotten already. Soon, they will forget everything. Him too. Then, he chooses anger over melancholy. It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the Fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Yes, you're ready to start building communism again. You've built it before. They've built it before. Hasn't really worked out yet. But neither has love. Should we just stop building love, too? This conversation isn't really about love. Try to keep up, okay? This is about the communism you've promised to build. Word on the street is, it's going to be 10,000 times larger than any communism previously attempted. Is that true? You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impale all people who have more than 25 real in their pockets, literally murder all human beings regardless of their political beliefs. That kind of stuff. Oh yes, the mask of ambivalence. Don't deny it. You're about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that would devour and masticate mankind. Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Failure. It's about failure. Yes, abject failure. Total, irreversible defeat on all fronts. Absolutely vanquished, beaten, curb stomped and pissed on. Until you came along, you will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world. You alone, against every living thing, against every human alive. 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossibly well-organized ruling class. Towering city blocks of bankmen who have the ears of prime ministers. Million-headed armies of nations and the love of your own mother. You against the atom, the charm and the spin. Where the whole world failed. 
Matter failed to bend to human will. Human will failed to get out of bed and tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly, will rebuild the dreams of the working class. You are the last communist. Now get to work, comrade. Oh yeah, get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Too late to back out now. You can't make an omelette without breaking a few million eggs. I have really held down myself. This is divine. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. Rene, tsk, tsk, it's a little pleasures. Life doesn't need to be a, um, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. No, I'm sorry. And I really would like to assist. You are a good guy, officer. I can see that. Then help him, you wimp. You have plenty of shoulder with the ghost caviar in the Union. Someone must know something. I wish I could, but I just don't know anything. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone knows and respects that. Respects? I'm not. I'm not even any... Of course he's holding back. His mouth is so full of union prick he can't even speak properly. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you piss on it? Is that okay, René? I'm not anyone impotent in the Union. I just know Evrard. Everyone in Martinez knows the Clare brothers. I taught this boy's human studies and history in the gymnasium. What do you know about history? You never witnessed history. Only heard about it years later, when it had already moved on. You don't know history. The old soldier mumbles something under his breath and turns to face the sea. There he stands, proud, rigid and alone, like a cracking marble statue. What a prick! The officer was addressing me, not you, Capitaine. Where were we? Oh, in many ways, yes. Like an honorary member. I attend meetings and parties, help with little things. Evrard, Edgar, and the older debarders all know me. Oh, yes. Not in the technical sense. I don't have a vote or a membership card. But Evrard keeps me on the payroll, just for the little things. Of course he's not a member. He's not a member of anything. I knew that. He's a Vesavain. Turns to where the wind blows and tries to look important. I hate the socialist rabble, but even siding with them is better than living your entire life on the fence, never committing to anything. Pick a damn side already. Writing work mostly. Occasionally, he needs something written, and I happen to have a way with words, people say. Oh, nothing official, I assure you. Just essays for the newspapers. About Martinez and how things are and how they could be. Evart and I had these long talks where... Well, he tells his little penman exactly what to say. It's comic propaganda, plain and simple. You should be ashamed of yourself. Thank you, officer, for being a consummate professional. You'll have this case wrapped up in no time. 
I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food. Nothing personal, it's just a principle. The only one you have. Suddenly you realize how hungry you are. The last time you ate must have been... God knows when. Aeons ago. Probably when you were still a child. The sandwich looks like a culinary wonder. Well made and abundant in components. The author sure knew their craft. In addition to the obvious slice of ham, a fat one, you notice a brim of a tomato peeking from below. And is that mayonnaise? Believe me, officer. I wish I could help you, but I need this sandwich to keep my blood sugar stable. In my age, you need to pay attention to these things. Fuck off! It's mine! Sorry, officer. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it in a bad way. But the sandwich is mine. I'm not gonna share it. When the dissidents come to rape our country, he hides. But try to get a bite of his dear sandwich and he gets claws? We are a special kind of vermin, Gaston. We're still waiting for a replacement for the bull you sent sinking. It's a Bell McGrave. 4.46 caliber. Bridge loading, Revachol made. Good weapon, accurate and reliable. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? I'm not surprised. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. Back in the day, everyone had something stashed away. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. These BM-446s are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? What is this? How are you mocking us? This isn't for Pitonk. Now, now, no need to get angry again, Rene. I'm sure the officer tried his best. It's not like there's a bull kiosk here in Martinez. Trying is worth as much as is accomplished. In this case, almost nothing. Fine. 
You try to write wrong. It's still a gun better than actual nothing. This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. The meat machine is unable to confirm or deny your theory. But yes, it was vandalism. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses, you spell out the word, Onuk, written on the other side, with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis, or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonassian church, a star, a great moral height to be strived towards. The church looks old and weather-worn. There are no lights in the windows. Around the large wooden building you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach, and a small tent set up on the ice. This coin-operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 centims and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? Your money disappears into the coin slot, a clunk, the ring of metal, the curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry. Different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab grey shape, like a ghost. The lenses shift. The ghost sharpens into an islet in the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible. A half-sunken sea fort. Its concrete almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. Its leaves ripped from it by the winter wind. The little brave birch tree seems to wave back in the wind. 